Hello, welcome to another Vintage TV Restoration. Yes, that's right, I couldn't wait, got itchy fingers after fixing the Murphy and decided to tackle this wee beast. Now, I'm a sucker for punishment, and this TV set falls right into that category. Because this is another oddball, one-off, home-brew TV. Yes, this is a no-name TV, it does not have a name on it at all, no brand, no nothing. It's a completely put together out of different bits and pieces television. So, this one's been in my mind for a while because um, I've actually had it for about, oh, probably about a good couple of years or so. And um, there is a posting on the UK Vintage TV and Radio Forum about it. Um, and with the help of a few members on there, I've actually managed to identify parts of the TV and what sort of what variant what variant of English chassis it come from. Um, how I came to acquire this TV, um, a friend of mine works for a local um, recycling station, and an old lady rang up and says, "Look, I've got this old TV in my garage. My husband built many many years ago. Does someone want it?" And my friend said, "Yes, I know just the guy." So. He got in contact with me and gave me the lady's details and then I contacted her and spoke to her about it on the phone. She sort of told me a little, little bit about it. She says, well, you know, you better come, out, you better come up and have a look at this thing. So I made the trip up in the car and met the lady, nice lady actually, really, 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 really nice old lady and um, very friendly and helpful and knew quite a bit about the TV. And uh, went out to the garage and lifted the door and here this thing, here's, here's this particular set was sitting Sitting with a with, a, with an old old blooming sack or something sort of draped over it and um, yes, yeah, so we got you got to tell me about the TV. Um, the story goes that her husband worked for broadcasting back in the nineteen sixties, and he used to regularly go to England to, to have training seminars and to and to um, find out what was going on over in England as we've got the same TV system as t TV system as as, as as the UK apart from the IF sound frequency which is a which is a little different but we're 65 line um, we never got 45 in New Zealand there were some experimental 45 line transmissions I think in the 1950s that were done here um, but they were only like sort of like um, a really experimental sort of stage even before the government decided to even launch TV because we the TV started here in 1960 um, so yeah, husband went to England and would go to train seminars and all that sort of thing. And um, he decided to build his own TV. So he brought bits of the set back with him in his suitcase every time he went to England. Um, mainly the chassis parts and mainly the internals. I think the picture tube was sourced here and um, I think, you know, um, basically all the other ancillary parts were, were sourced here. The cabinet is the cabinet's home built as well. The cabinet is definitely uh, home built, or oh, being put together. Um, the escutcheon around the around the CRT, I don't know. That could be again. It's probably something that was um, that was that was available at the time. And uh, yeah, so he brought he, he brought bits of them over in his suitcase. And uh, apparently one day customs hauled him up and just pulled him over and said, well, "I want to look on the contents of your suitcase." So he opened them up and and the customs guys customers said, "Well, what's all this here?" And 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 the and the um the guy said, oh, television parts. And he says, television parts. He says, you've got to be joking. We've only just got TV here. He said, you can't be. You must be lying. He said, look, bloody close up your suitcase and bugger off. So, so the guy duly did sort of snigger into himself, and he couldn't wait to get home to tell his wife about it all. Um, yeah. So there's a bit a bit of humour there. Um. Yeah, so, um, and he obviously built the TV up over a series of months, well, I, 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 don't, I don't know how long he, he took the build up, but apparently um, it was in use for quite some time, and then his, and then her, his grandmother used it in, at her place until she passed away, and then the set just got transferred into the garage where it sat for, I think she said a good 20 or 30 years, before she, basically she was going into, into retirement home and moving, so the set basically had to go. And luckily, yeah, she thought of the recycling station and now it's ended up with me. So, I've, again, I've saved another very rare, oddball, one-off TV. Um, I'd probably class this in similar veins to the Telerator, which I did up not, uh, which I did up some time ago. But uh, this set uses a, collabor a collaboration of 
it's it's got an English based chassis, um, and it uses and even the control panel is definitely English as well. Um, but the yoke and picture chew apparently a pie. Um, that is that's definitely um, from the Philips um, S8 uh, black and white TV. Now if I go over to here, you'll actually see this is the one I the video I did the one I did, did, did the video on, which saw which is still running perfectly by the way. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the exact same speaker grill. Um, actually, could have could have even 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 the escutcheon is actually similar. Is it the similar? No, it's not quite the same, is it? Um, yeah, so you can sort of see where he got all these bits from. Um, and the cabinet actually isn't too bad. It's actually got a the front the actual front escutcheon is wooden, but the actual um, this is actually for mica. So um, and again, it's got the safety glass in front, which it probably doesn't need because it's got a bonded tube anyway. But uh, I suppose but then they're all paranoid about. TV tubes exploded, and especially if kids throw golf balls or chuck something at the screen when packing a pet and packing a teddy or something. Um, so yeah, um, it's uh, it's actually in quite tidy condition. A few dead bugs. I don't quite know how I'm going to get that out. All that rubbish out. I'll have to take the tube out. To be honest, I don't know whether I don't know whether I can be bothered actually, but it actually looks pretty crusty, so I might just depend depends how depends how I go with the thing anyway. Um, so yeah, all right. Well, uh, I might as well um, I might as well spin it around, take the back cover off, and let you have a look inside, and I'll tell you more about it. <laughs> 